Hello everyone. In today's video, we are going to talk about Kubernetes deprecation of Docker, the most overrated topic of the year. I know we are a little late on the topic, but being late, we get the latest information. So stay tuned till the end of the video to know about the latest update on this topic of how Kubernetes has deprecated Docker. This is Narendra Krish, and you are watching. If you just Google Kubernetes deprecated Docker, we'll be finding around 500,000 results for now, which is huge. Firstly, don't panic. So I'm going to start my whole presentation with the first slide that talks about why not to panic and why it will not change anything much. Once we hear this news, Kubernetes is dropping Docker, there will be very basic series of questions that will be coming out in our head. Can I still create images using Docker? Yes. Can I still use Docker file for creating images? Yes. Can I use Docker in local machine to test and run my images? Yes. Can those same images be run in a cluster without Docker and some other container runtime? Yes. Can I use Docker registry to store my images? Yes. Can I use my existing other registry to store my images as today? Yes. Can I use images from Docker Hub? Yes. So the answer is yes, yes and yes. So all this is not going to change. So first thing, don't panic. So now that we are not panicking anymore, let me explain about what is exactly this container run D, what is exactly Docker, what we mean when we say Docker is getting deprecated by Kubernetes. Firstly, Docker is not just the runtime. Docker is not just the CLI. Docker is not just anything that you have seen so far. Docker is a huge ecosystem. It has its own CLI and API. It has its own daemon. And underlying, they have the container runtime. As you see here, container D is nothing but is the runtime that is underlying Docker as well. So what is container runtime? Container runtime is nothing but an abstraction layer that can talk container languages and you need not worry about directly talking any OS level functions. And it is built based on OCI. OCI is Open Container Initiative, which is a set of specifications that defines how a container should interact with operating system. That's the simplest way of explaining it. And none of these diagrams are just from my imaginary head. All these are from official documentations and I'll be providing the references to them in my video. Stay till end of this video. I'm going to also give a new update, which is not going to be available in those 500,000 results that we talked about. Another one diagram that I want to show is again a different representation of the same thing. As you see here, Docker is just more than the runtime. So Docker is the engine, it has its API, it has its server, and then container D is just part of it. So Docker is not just meant to be just a runtime and it is not aligning to the CRI standards that is defined by Kubernetes because Docker is just an API. It's supposed to be used by users. So what is exactly Kubernetes dropping? Okay, Kubernetes dropping the support for Docker shim. Now what is Docker shim? This is the simplest diagram I can look for. It's again from Kubernetes.io, uh, nothing, something that I'm making up. So here if you see every kubelet, if you're already using Kubernetes, you know what is a kubelet, it runs in every node and that is responsible for understanding your requirements to run or your workloads to run in the node and it is creating those containers for you. So basically it uses CRI. CRI is the container runtime interface that I mentioned. So this is a specification defined by Kubernetes to talk to any containers, to create any containers, right? Now it uses something called Docker shim. Now Docker shim, you can imagine is like a translator. It understands the Docker API language and it converts it into the CRI standards that is defined by Kubernetes. Underlying to the Docker, as we saw before, is the container D. Now look at the container D 1.0 implementation. It just says, instead of using Docker shim, we'll use a CRI container D, which is a direct implementation of CRI specification and directly interacts with container D. So you don't need a Docker and Docker shim in between. And why even that's coming in today, right? Why is Docker shim being deprecated? Docker shim is being maintained by Kubernetes and not Docker. 
So the Kubernetes team has specifically mentioned maintaining Docker stream has become heavy burden on Kubernetes maintainers. So they feel they are maintaining something extra just for supporting Docker, the whole Docker, the whole ecosystem. Rather, they would like to switch to just the runtime, connect to the container D, which is already supporting the CRE standards. So there's nothing but changing from the architecture point of view. Next question is, when will this happen? Can I still use Docker and Kubernetes 1.20? Yes, till 1.20, they are just informing right now that they will just print a log informing the Docker runtime support is getting removed because the stream will be removed by Kubernetes, right? Again, hold till the end of the video, I have a different update for that. When will Docker stream be completely removed? As per this specification, they are telling it will not be before Kubernetes 1.22 uh, and earliest it will be like 1.23 which will be in late 2021 and that is from the Kubernetes roadmap point of view. And how many of us are already using Kubernetes 1.19? Let's raise our hands. Mm. I see around 25, minus 25 hands. Yeah. Nobody uses. So we still wait for the versions to stabilize and then we start using it. We still have good time to analyze about it, experiment it, and then decide the right container runtime before we jump around and panic about it. Also provided the reference to this, this is from the FAQ document provided by in Kubernetes IO once this panicking started. Okay, what should I look out for when changing the implementation? Okay, you are asking me to change the container runtime implementation and you have already told me that I need not worry about the images, the images will work as it is, I can still use the same registries. Then where is the impact exactly for me or for anybody in my organization? This is again from the FAQ documentation. It's pretty simple. So you have to look out for the alternative CRI and if it's supporting, there are a few things that you have to consider while migrating, right? The logging configuration, how you are logging, how you are pushing these logs to your logging stack, right? Today, you know, Docker produces logs in a particular location. Will that location be different for your CRI implementation? What CRI implementation you are talking about, right? What is the run, so runtime resource limitations? Look out for this. Node provisioning scripts. Yeah, this is the important one, right? So today you will node provisioning scripts. All your worker nodes uh, will have Docker getting installed or your master nodes will get in Docker installed. Now you should remove those provisioning scripts or configuration management script. It can be an Ansible, it can be in your bootstrap script. You have to go out, look for it. Instead of Docker, you should change it to install some other runtime, whatever you are choosing. We'll come to that a little later. How, what are the different alternatives we have? Uh, but that's, that's the main thing that I see that you have to change. And if you're using any managed Kubernetes, like Kubernetes uh, from AWS EKS or Kubernetes from Azure or Kubernetes from Google GCP, you don't have to worry about this. Most of this will be handled by them and they'll be providing your machine image. For example, in AWS, they'll be providing a new AMI, which will come contain the new runtime, right? Uh, so all these are like very simple things. So Kubernetes tools that require direct access to Docker, Kubernetes plugins that you're using that needs Docker. Like if you're using some additional plugins in Kubernetes, uh, which are specific for Docker, that might change, then you have to relook for it, right? If that runtime specifically needs any special hardware. now. All this again, the wide varieties of possibilities you have to look for, but most of them will be very well aligned to the uh, current Docker runtime that you have, which is a container D. Uh, so you need not panic too much, but it's better to look for this when you are evaluating a container runtime. Okay, the next thing is what are my alternatives, right? So this is a screenshot from the CNCF landscape. So you have lots of alternatives. Some of these are listed here, container D, CRIO, Firecracker, Open Run C, Smart OS, Kata, etc. So go look out for them. So don't worry. In our channel, we are going to come up with videos that's going to explain how you can replace the Docker runtime with any of these runtimes and going to show it practically with a demo. So hit the subscribe button and give a thumbs up if you're already liking this video so far. And wait for the next slide. That's the important one. Okay, now the good news. Just after all this panicking, Mirantis, I think most of you would have known Mirantis is now owning the Docker Enterprise as come back and they have mentioned they are going to support the deprecated Kubernetes Docker stream, meaning they are going to continue to support Docker stream and they will do whatever it needs. So the Docker stream will continue to be there. So probably we not even panic. So this is going to be there. It's going to be there for some time. Uh, so chill out and check out the container runtime alternatives that I've mentioned. Keep watching our videos. You will get a video about how we, how we are going to replace the Docker runtime with another runtime and how everything will change 
from logging uh, your resource requirements your node scripts boot subscripts etc so thanks for watching this is narendra krish signing off